please welcome my talented friend, Mr. Al Roker. Hello, sir. How are you, dear? I'm doing so good. I can't tell you how many times since we started the show, people said, when is Al coming on? When is Al coming on? I'm like, do you know how busy Al Roker is? But finally, you're here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, look, thank you. Uh, we're all busy. Everybody's busy. We're, we're, we're working from home. We're living at work. Uh, who knows what we're doing? I got to tell you, because we haven't had a chance to talk, and I'm going to share this with the public. My son Moses had surgery a couple of months ago. And I was in a panic. I didn't know what to do. I called Al Roker and I said, Al, I need your help. And within seconds, I'm at the doctor, I'm at the surgery center, and everything worked out just beyond what I could have expected. So this is what this man brings to my life. I mean, are you this good to everybody? Well, it's it's kind of like my dad used to say. Uh, <laughs> he said, so Dad, everybody hates me. So that's not possible. You haven't met everybody yet. Uh, actually, it was Friday Dangerfield who said that. But it's the same kind of thing. I don't know everybody, so I don't know that I'm I'm that great to everybody. But I try to I try to help. You do listen. I know your roots. Your dad, who was a bus driver, your beloved mom. You just posted about them recently. So much of who Al Roker is, honestly is that kid who grew up watching some awesome parents be great people. Yeah, I was very fortunate. Uh, Deborah will say, I, she goes, I, can you make the pedestal any bigger that you put your parents on? Uh, and they weren't perfect folks, but you know, they did the best they could. They were middle-class uh, uh, parents who raised middle-class kids. And, and I think I, I appreciate you know, the, the, that work ethic that, that both of them had. Okay. And and we learned you worked hard and you don't always get the breaks you want, but you can't get those breaks okay. unless you work hard. And that's, and you're, you're kind of the same way. I'm kind of the same way? I do work hard, Al Roker. <laughs> you work very hard. Well, I know you don't work as hard as I do, but you work hard. I mean, look, you've got thousands of staff there. You got your executive producer, Candy Carter. They, you know, they they bring you in on pillows and they kind of they, they throw rose petals out in front as right. you walk out. It's, it's just incredible. like they did when I was on the Today Show third. I just carried my cart here. But let me tell you, you talk about Deborah. Um, your amazing wife, ABC News superstar. I mean, the reality is so much of your love story is about uplifting each other as well. One of the most romantic things I've ever heard in my life was when Al Roker wooed Deborah Roberts. She was out of town. You were friends. And you went to her apartment as a friend favor. And then what happened? Yeah. How'd you steal her heart? Well, you know, I, I, most guys, I think, would look in the bedroom. I looked in her kitchen, and, and I, you know, I opened up the cabinets, nothing, cobwebs, opened up the fridge. There was a bottle of champagne and a dried-up uh, bottle of Grey Poupon mustard. And then I opened the oven, and I, that really threw me because there was cardboard on the racks. And then I realized, oh, my God, she's never used the oven. How is this possible? How do you live in an apartment for a year and, and never use the oven? So just before she got back, I stocked the fridge, stocked the pantry, left some flowers on the table, and a little note, welcome back. And then a week later, I got a date. Yeah, see, okay, people are applauding in here. See, that's how you do it. That's how you get a date. You know what? Well, well when, you look, when you look like this, you really got to go the extra mile, <laughs> you know? I mean... Because especially when we were dating, I was, as you know, heavier. I mean, we literally looked like the black version of the Flintstones. I don't you know? believe it, and I'm not. I'm not. I will not Please. embrace that. I will not we were embrace like, we were that. like the honeymoon. She looked like Alice, and I looked like like uh, like you know. Uh, 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 Jackie Glazer. No, percussion. listen, you are a beautiful couple, rated consistently the best dressed, most beautiful couple, but you do have a new challenger because your daughter Courtney is engaged. She's getting married. Talk about a good looking couple. When she announced that engagement, I started just to weep. How does it feel now? This will be the first wedding. You've got three kids. This is the yes, first wedding. I've got. It is the first wedding, and it's, you know, look, Wes is a lovely young man. Uh, they, they are terrific together. Uh, and, and so this was an easy one. This one was easy, you know. So uh, if the other two meet folks who are just as nice as Wes, with families just as nice, then uh, I, I am a blessed man, believe me. And the wedding's coming up in a couple of weeks. Are you nervous? Everybody's been 
You know, I've kind of been hands off in a sense, uh, and that Courtney's done a lovely job of planning this. And so my basic job is just to keep writing checks. <laughs> And Al Roker can write those checks because he's the executive producer of this awesome series coming up. And we're going to be joined by the stars of Al's series, Morning Show Mysteries. Our friend Holly Robinson-Pete and Karen Robinson join us with Al. Don't go anywhere after the break. What did I tell you about popping out the door? I told you I was coming over after the show. Well, you made good time. I'm pretty sure the credits are still rolling. How'd it go with Maggie? Oh, well, let's see. She doesn't think her father is guilty. She thinks that Jay Messner killed Phoebe, and she asked me to tell you to tell the scary detective so that he doesn't suspect her of manipulating, even though she clearly is manipulating, which is when I remembered that I am an ordinary citizen who does not enjoy solving crime. Okay, welcome back. We're rounding out our spring refresh week with the stars of Hallmark Movies and Mysteries series. The new episode premieres this Sunday. The show's executive producer is Al Roker. He is still with us, joined by the stars, Holly Robinson, Pete, and Karen Robinson. Welcome, Holly and Karen. What a beautiful trio here. <laughs> Goodness, everybody on here, top to bottom, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Holly, you play... What, a, a, ter a character inspired by Al Roker. Yes. So Al is that like playing Al Roker with hair? Like, how do you do that? <laughs> you know, in my yearbook, it said, who do you want to be when you get older? I want to be Al Roker. So I got a chance to play Al Roker. Now, these movies were inspired by Al's books, yeah. Morning Show Murders. And what's so awesome about it is that uh, when Al decided he was going to option his books to become movies, I was also working with Hallmark Channel to come up with a mystery wheel. And here we are. So that became Morning Show Mysteries. And uh, it's just been a blast. And so excited that we got to shoot a sixth one. You know, I remember the first one. Al and I were working together. He's working on the book. And, and, and it's just like it made sense. But you also have personal chemistry. And you <laughs> also have been incredible advocates for families and children on the spectrum. So you have so much in common. Yes, I've known Al for so many years. Our kids are friends. Our families are friends. We've celebrated milestones together. We've helped each other through the tough times, through the, the through the fun times. We just are great friends. So the opportunity to work with him was just icing on the cake. I mean, this has just been this natural uh, extension of family, which is kind of what happens on Morning Show Mysteries. I mean, between uh, Holly and, and Karen, you see this this wonderful symbiotic relationship of not just a, 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 an aunt and her, her her niece, but but two real friends who care about each other. Karen, I know you've said you were inspired by Holly and Al as you were migrating into this world, this industry, um, and looking mm -hmm. for people to, to really th that were inspiring, that look like you. Absolutely. When I moved to um, to Canada in 1984, uh, I, it was what within a year or so that 21 Jump Street actually premiered on TV, Holly. And yes. um, and that was I had always known that. I, I mean, I'm the youngest of four. I always had to be louder and more dramatic in order to get any attention in my family. So it was kind of set that I was going to go into the performance industry. But seeing Holly on TV when I moved here, I think that actually spurred me along the path. Um, and then, you know, uh, moving ahead, going to theater school, doing all of that stuff, and then watching Al, I saw my people on TV, and that encouraged me. That I knew that I knew that I could be there too, if I, if I just kept working hard. Well, like I mean, and the said. hard work and paid I, off, like Al Roker said. You know, your hard work pays off. You are, have this reoccurring role on ABC's A Million Little Things. People obviously. I, 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 fell in love with Schitt's Creek. Um, the creator, Dan Levy, said it. he has no regrets about going out at the height of its popularity. How did you feel uh, about moving on? Um, you know, uh, it was sad. Mm. I, I, um, I, uh, 
we certainly all felt it uh, that, you know, this incredible experience that we'd had for six years was coming to an end. So there was that sadness. But I knew that um, Dan and Eugene had the integrity of the show paramount yeah. in their minds. And uh, if they made the decision that the story had been told to the best of all of right. our abilities and that it was time to go, Listen, I, they I have a saying in show business, it. when one family leaves, you get another. And you got an awesome one with Holly and Al I got and the several. people with this. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I am so, I, I, I sort of can't believe what is happening. I'm just along for the ride. I'm along for the ride and I'm giving thanks.